everybody. Um, so uh, I'd like to welcome you back to our long-awaited return to Lunch and Learn lectures um, hosted by the HCBI. So thanks everyone for coming out. Here's the schedule for the summer. Uh, it obviously, it's not every week. Um, so we'll be sending out emails for our listserv, as we always do the day before as a reminder. Um, schedule is also posted on our website. So today we're happy to welcome back Sven Terry Clavers. Uh, I'm sure most of you recognize him as our former embedded site specialist. And in case anybody hasn't met our new embedded site specialist, uh, that's Sebastian sitting right over here. Um, so Sven's going to be talking us talking to us today about some of the advances in uh, confocal microscopy. And I think this is a really good example of why we need an evergreen facility like we have here at Harvard. So about a year ago, John Wales gave a lecture about the brand new Harry scan uh, detector that came out. So we had just installed one of those at that time. So Sven's going to be giving us a review about that. But he's also going to be talking about a new parallel parallelized scanner that goes along with the area scan uh, that we also just recently installed about a week ago. So it just shows you that this technology is changing so fast. It's changing on a yearly basis now. It's kind of even a two or three year basis. Um, so it keeps me up at night, but thankfully he's kind of here to explain it all to us. So with that, take it away, Sven. See if I can switch this. As Doug mentioned, uh, last year we had a talk here by my, our colleague John Wales about the new LSM 880 and AdiScan technology. Today we go a little bit further with this AdiScan technology and I'm going to dig deeper into it. But before that, I will also give a slight overview of what the 880 now does and what the AdiScan does. Confocal microscopy is still used for many applications. Uh, you've seen this slide, I'm sure, before. We can just do regular imaging, we can do tiling, we can do 3D imaging, time-lapse imaging. It's also being used for uh, FRAP, FRAP technology, photo manipulation, molecular analysis, rigs, or a uh, number of brightness analysis to define your uh, polymerization in your sample. Spectrum and mixing, if you have four or five dyes with overlapping emission spectra, you can nicely separate them on the fly. All this is possible with the LSM 880. Now, one of the major improvements with LSM 880 that Zeiss was aiming for was um, sensitivity. While the standard of focus, the standard LSM 880 by itself was already made more sensitive than its uh, predecessor, the LSM 780, with air scan we went a step further than that. We made it now about four to eight times more sensitive than a regular Confocal detector. Additionally to that, also with AdiScan, we also improved the resolution 1.7 times. So instead of looking at something of approximately 250 nanometers or 220 nanometers, we can now go down to about 140 nanometers lateral resolution. Now, as you can see here on the left side, this is an image that has been acquired with uh, the internal gas detector, a gas detector known as being one of the more sensitive detectors uh, in the field. As compared to the older PMT, the gas detector was already two times more sensitive. Acquisition time of this image took about 24 minutes. Nowadays, with the air scan detector in fast mode, it took six minutes to acquire this whole image. And still, you can appreciate that with the air scan, with the gas detector, I'm sorry, because of being sensitive, the image might be nice, there is still some noise structure to it. With the end scan detector, we also remove even more noise and have more uh, signal. We actually also collect more signal because we step away from the pinhole in the composer microscope, that more 
about that later. Up until now, fast image acquisition had to be done on a confocal microscope with a resonance scanner. The regular scanners of a microscope could not uh, reach the 80 frames per second and still have a decent field of view. You really had to zoom in a lot and have a very, very small field of view if you wanted to reach um, high speeds like this. But because of scanning that fast, your scanner or the image that's being acquired, you don't spend much time per pixel. So you don't collect lots of light per pixel in a resonance scanner. That's why the image here appears very, very noisy. Now with the air scanning fast mode, we can now also reach this uh, speed, actually even more in this case, 98 frames per second. But additionally to that, we also collect much more light than before. So here you can nicely appreciate the difference between the air scan running in fast mode uh, versus the good old resonance scanner, even if it was used with gas detectors. Now, why is um, <coughs> sensitivity of a confocal microscope important? It's actually important because we want to prevent photo damage and photo leaching, especially photo damage because of phototoxicity. Putting light onto your sample, can uh, one bleach your sample? It's not nice if you want to do a hand ups and suddenly your uh, chlorophore is gone because it has been bleached. But additionally to that, it can also create oxygen radicals into your sample. Oxygen radicals can be toxic for your life cycle. Reduced signal to noise and resolution over time is also one of the effects. Now, Additionally to that, as mentioned, we will also be bleaching the structures before or even during the observation. Before being, of course, the worst of all. Because you know it's there, and once you want to start imaging your life sample, it's gone. And you can't see it anymore. So the lower we can put our laser power onto the sample, the less photo bleaching and the less phototoxicity we will have. There have been, in the meantime, several uh, publications about it, especially the Second one is a very famous one because it was also quoted as death by super resolution. And the last one also mentions that by increasing your um, laser power onto your sample, you also increase the local temperature. It's not because your uh, fluorescent protein is actually stable and not bleaching that your laser power is not affecting anything else inside your living cell. Once you put light on your cell, you, you are actually increasing the spot temperature where you are imaging. And this temperature can really go up to uh, 50, 60, 70, 80 degrees Celsius. So you can imagine what's happening to the molecules that maybe you're not observing, but they're also taking part of the life cycle of the cell. So you don't want to damage those either. This is uh, what was mentioned about the depth by super resolution uh, paper. Is rarely more than a few frames could be acquired without some phototoxic changes to the cellular physiology. And that's why super resolution, whether it's now done with Paul M. D. Storm or uh, with STAT, super resolution in general can be very damaging for your cells. One of the technology, structured illumination, is also much more gentle for that though. And this was the part about the sensitivity. How did we create the sensitivity in our confocal microscope? First of all, we collect all the photons, photons that are lost during diffraction in its uh, spectral properties, are recollected in the so-called recycling loop. By using the high quantum efficiency gas detectors and also by getting the highest scan time efficiency. Scanning with the LSM880 is still happening in a linear fashion, which is fairly unique. It also means that while the scanners are moving and the time used for acquisition of the data is actually longer than the time lost has the image for the scanners to move back into the image for acquisition. That's what's called the duty cycle. So 
the duty cycle with the Zyphon focal is about 85% versus 15% of laser scanning time that's being lost. On other systems, this can go up to 25 or even 35% of time lost. So the time spent on pixels can be much higher as such. So we can collect much more light within the same time. Now here you see an effect of um, the actin dynamics acquired with the old noisy EMT detector. And on the bottom, you can see the visible dynamics with the regular gas detector. So just because the gas detector technology is already two times more sensitive, you see that the image is less noisy. Because of gas detector technology, we can bring down the noise, we can increase the signal. Signal to noise increasing gives us more detail. Because the noise level is lower, we can also actually scan faster. Then with the PMT, we don't have to do averaging or something to get rid of the noise in the image. Also in fixed samples, even though you can put, generally you can put more laser power on your samples, you still might have more noise with the regular PMT detection. With the glass detector, you can have a much higher signal to noise as well. Now then, actually, Zeiss asked several people all around the world what they wanted to, um, to see happening in confocal microscopy as the next future confocal microscope. What's your idea? What do you need? And most of the people were actually going for sensitivity, for Z resolution, XY resolution or lateral resolution, and then the maximum frame rate. Now with LSM 880 and AIRSCAN, those three here were resolved. We increased sensitivity because of taking away, for example, fan cooling and replacing it with liquid cooling in the confocal scan at itself. The resolution in Z and X and Y was then also improved because of using the air scan detector. And additionally to that, with air scan detection technology, also the sensitivity was improved much more, as I mentioned, four to eight times as compared to the glass detection technology. Just because of the pixel reassignment that's occurring in the air scan detector, and followed by the deconvolution. So we expanded all those three already. <coughs> now, gentle imaging of your sample is Zeiss's responsibility. It's actually the company's a company's responsibility because we provide you the commercial available confocal microscopes. And we can't really make compromises either. It's not like, okay, we give you higher sensitivity, but you have lower resolution or whatsoever. So we really have to try to expand in all dimensions. Resolution, speed, and sensitivity. That's why with the scan we now have the simultaneous super resolution and sensitivity. Here you can see an example of a fish signal acquired with a gas detected on internal confocal microscope. And this is acquired with the air scan detector. At first, that's maybe not that much different, but once you zoom in, you can really appreciate the difference, the difference between the gas detector technology and the air scan detector. Just because of the increased resolution, we can now distinguish those two objects from each other, where with the regular confocal mode, it looks like it's only one object. And you can also see that the noise in the background and the noise in the sample has been lowered and the signal has been improved. Now, how do we do that with the air scan detector? Every confocal microscope, even the very old ones, can actually produce super resolution technology. We just have to close down the pinhole beyond what's called the one any unit that we use. Now, if you look at a bunch of beads with your pinhole set to one air unit, and the beads are, in this case, 170 nanometer, they're beyond the diffraction limit of what we can observe with the confocal microscope. And they will look like a smear. Just imagine that we would displace the pinhole and make it smaller. In this case, I have a pinhole on the left side in green, one on the right side in red, and on the bottom in blue. If we now look at the beads, we actually have a displacement 
of the beads in the three colors. But because of this displacement, we can now, we know the displacement, we can actually push them back to the center. And because of doing so, we can also recalculate, we can improve our resolution. Now instead of closing down the pinhole, we're going to open up the pinhole. Because what is the big disadvantage of closing down the pinhole on the confocal microscope? So you might increase your resolution, but you decrease the signal collection a lot. You basically, you block off the light that you're detecting. Now instead of closing down the pinhole, we're going op to open up the pinhole, and we're going to detect all the light that comes from the sample onto a detector that's assembled by 32 smaller detector elements. These detector elements are positioned in a ring around each other. So we have a center detector element, we have a ring around it, another ring around it, and a third ring around it. Each detector element now acts as a virtual pinhole of 0.2 adding units. So this means that while we are acquiring all the light coming from the sample, we actually, because of opening up the pinhole, we collect much more light than ever before on a confocal microscope. And at the same time, we also know the super resolution information. So if you look at the beads, for example, with only the second ring active, this is what you would see happening. Every element looks at the displacement of the ring, of, of, the, of the bead. So this element versus that one versus that one looks all at the same image, but your image is six times this. Uh, this place. And then we calculate the sum of this. Then we look at the second ring and we have an even higher displacement. Even higher displacement, also a little bit less light because we're going towards the outside of the point spread function. And also from this we can now make the sum of the images. And then the last one we hardly detect still some signal, but there is still signal coming from the sample. And we have an even larger displacement. And we're going to combine all those images to the center. We're going to do pixel reassignment. We're going to push all this information towards the, cent the center position. Before we do that, we also do a rather deconvolution on those images. In the end, as you compare to the confocal microscope image of the beads, we have the pixel reassignment image of the beads, and you already can see that just because of the pixel reassignment, we have a 1.4 times improvement in resolution. Because of the deconvolution, we can now push it further down to 1.7 times the resolution improvement. As I mentioned, there's other ways to do this. You can close down your pinhole with very good detectors, such as the Gauss detectors. You can then still collect the, the light coming from those uh, <coughs> samples. And then you can also run deconvolution on it. However, often this is said to be, okay, we can close down the pinhole to 0 0.6 area units and then we run deconvolution and we can also reach 140 nanometers. Typically the graph that's then shown is the one for a single emitter. Your samples usually don't have single emitters, they have multiple emitters. And in that case the graph actually shifts a little bit. And here on the bottom, I hope it's, it's clear to see the difference, is here you have a four times average image with a pinhole close to 0.6 area units with a focal microscope and then run deconvolution. Six times averaging before you have enough signal to noise of your sample. If you do eight times averaging, you actually increase the signal to noise just because with the averaging you decrease the noise and your signal to noise ratio thus increases. But the time to acquire this is already eight times longer than what you would do with the air scan detector. 
some examples of how fast it can go with deconvolution, because deconvolution is also something that's implemented in software. You can run it yourself if you want. And nowadays, um, all of the companies basically offer GPU deconvolution, and you can really have very high speed increases to perform deconvolution, where before it would take hours or even days to calculate your images as post-processing. We can now speed it up up to uh, 22 times or even 82 times depending on your image. So deconvolution can be a solution as well. It's not being excluded. But typically, you will lose quite a lot of time for the image acquisition. And because of closing down your pinhole, instead of opening up your pinhole, you also don't collect as much light. As an example, deconvolution performed on um, two photon image with two photon detector in non d scan detector, we collect all the light that comes from a sample and then run deconvolution on it, even with the gas detectors in non d scan position. You still have very little improvement because of deconvolution. But Aries scan can still go beyond that. We don't detect more light with the Aries scan in, uh, in two photon imaging. We do still, still improve the signal to noise ratio. Also, if you're running a time-lapse image, on the left side, time-lapse image on, and uh, I think this was also a HeLa cell. 4% of laser power, deconvolution performed on, on an image acquired with pinhole close down to 0 0.6 air units. This is a time-lapse coming up. On the right side, however, this same type of cell acquired with only 0.5 times percent laser power with the air scan. You can appreciate in the time lapse how fast the first cell is actually bleaching. Just because we, we have to use here eight times more laser power than with the air scan. So for your time lapse imaging for cells, the lower the laser power, the better it is. And as you can appreciate with air scan 0.5% what I personally call candlelight imaging. Now, several, uh, there are already several publications in the meantime. Some examples <coughs> here. Here you see traditional confocal on a TOM20 versus TOM20 staining, so mitochondrial membrane staining. Confocal on the top. On the bottom, you the same image with acquired with air scan detection. You can see that the air scan by itself is fast enough to acquire this, but because of the improved resolution, we can nicely see the membrane of the mitochondria versus of the confocal microscope, where you just don't have enough resolution. Also, it's gentle enough to look at the division of cells, which is typically something that's very susceptible for uh, phototoxicity. 3D imaging acquired with SIM, another gentle or pretty gentle super resolution technology versus Aries scan. The disadvantage of SIM in this case is that with structured illumination you are limited in depth. Typically 20-30 micrometers that you can go deep with. If you can scan it with a confocal microscope, you can scan it with air scan detector, which means you can go down to 50 micrometer or even 100 micrometer, or with a photo even 300 to 500 micrometer. You can go much lower there. Here's an example of the multi photon excitation. And you can, in this case, appreciate on the top left one photon excitation confocal versus air scan, you definitely see improved resolution and improved um, contrast as well, or signal to noise. On the bottom with the two photon, more or less the same intensity that we see, but we also have the improved resolution and less noise in the sample because of the improved signal to noise ratio. This was acquired at 300 micrometers deep. So it's definitely something you can't really do with any other super-resolution technology. 
With the FAST module, however, we now try to solve the fourth question. How do we improve the frame rate? So we have improved the sensitivity four to eight times. We have improved, improved axial and lateral resolution with air scan. Now with the same detector, we also improved our scan speed. We actually improved the scan speed up to four times faster. So now we can offer super resolution and sensitivity and high speed. Here you see some calcium imaging in uh, zebrafish. On the left side, the image acquired in the regular confocal microscope. Maximum speed 512 by 512 would be 13 frames per second. On the left side, you can see we can actually acquire many, many more points. Sorry, on the left side is five frames per second for the air scan detector. On the right side, air scan detector in fast mode, we can now acquire with 19 frames per second. So which means we can measure at many more points within the same time. And have improved the resolution and have improved sensitivity. So what's actually happening or how do we do it? We have our laser light coming out, being redirected to the sample. The sample will be now emitting light towards the detector. I don't know if you notice here in front of the lasers, there's a beam shaper. Instead of having a regular circular beam, we actually flatten the beam and we illuminate four pixels at the same time. When we illuminate four pixels at the same time in the Y direction, we can also detect four pixels at the same time in the air scan detector. That's what's happening here. So in the regular air scan detector, we open up the pinhole, we collect all the light spread out over the 32 detector elements. In the fast mode, however, we shape the beam of the laser. We illuminate four lines on top of each other. For our sample, laser light is coming back and is being detected on 16 elements of the air scan detector. The four center elements here will each represent one pixel in the y direction. The detector elements around it will help in increasing the sensitivity and the resolution as well. So as compared to the regular end scan detector where we detect light from the first bump, in the center of the first bump, central bump and the next one here of the point spread function, we now open up our detection window a little bit more, so we basically collect more light because of the zoom optics internally. And we collect immediately four lines at once. So instead of having a point scanner where we look at pixel by pixel, we now have kind of a very small line scanner where we detect four pixels at the same time. We can build up our image much faster than ever before. Four times faster. Because of not using the air scan detector completely, the resolution improvement is not 1.7 times. You can still run it in regular air scan detection mode, of course, as well. The resolution improvement is now 1.5 times. But our speed can now be going up to 90 frames a second at 512, 512. If you make the field of view smaller when you zoom in, as you have seen before, we can even reach 96 frames per second. So with resonance scanner, 1K by 1K at 7.5 frames per second, or with air scan fast, if we zoom in, see the resonance scanner is fast enough to follow everything as well, so that's why it's a resonance scanner. But with now air scan running fast mode, you have improved resolution and you also have improved sensitivity. Much better signal to noise. Also here where you see the, the tubular movement in cardiomyocytes, air scan detector versus sorry, air scan detector versus the resonance. This publication came out actually right before the air scan fast was 
being uh, commercialized two, two weeks before it. But it could be published that fast just because of Ariscan fast, which was run at that site in beta test mode. Because with the regular resonance scanner, they could not see what they actually wanted to see. Also, a focal with gas detector and the air scanning fast mode. You can see some uh, cardiomyocytes loaded with 304 for uh, calcium imaging. So when you see the calcium peaks coming up between the air scan running fast, we can actually capture many more calcium spots. Calcium. 15 frames per second versus 30 frames per second. If you then highlight any of the calcium peaks detected, you can appreciate the difference between both, I guess. As a color-coded uh, projection, how many uh, positions we detected versus here, and also how much brighter they are with the airspeed fast as compared to the regular gas detector. can actually also be used for tiling. You see, I wasn't even fast enough to talk about it. It's already finished, where the LSM glass detector is now still acquiring the images. So you can also acquire much faster your tiled images. And if you zoom in, you can also see that we have improved the resolution and improved sensitivity. So there's much less noise than compared to the left image. Confocal with gas detector took about nearly five minutes to acquire this image as compared to the bottom one, one a little over one minute to acquire it. Um, so live drosophila. Once you zoom in, or the whole uh, drosophila embryo, for example, this was a Z-stack, 55 Z-stacks as you can read here on the side. You can actually follow the embryo development now as well. It's fast enough to do that. Fast volume imaging for calcium signaling. If you have a Z piezo insert on the stage, you can very fast acquire the Z steps now. You can actually acquire 3D images in time fast enough to look at calcium. But here, you just see some slices here, you will really see the 3D reconstruction. And another example, Arabidopsis, for those that are working with plants, the gas detector can definitely uh, give you enough signal as well to detect it, but now with air scan fast, higher resolution again, and higher sensitivity. So you can much better follow the sleep going up. It doesn't exclude any of the other modes of air scan. It's not because you're working with fast that you suddenly can't use air scan anymore. You can still use the LSM gas detector. We can use the fast mode in super resolution. We can also use the regular air scan in super resolution. And here you see the difference in resolution between both. So these are uh, Golgi. And you see here you have a higher resolution with the regular air scan super resolution than compared to fast mode. But I believe that for many applications, the fast mode might still be more than sufficient in resolution. Another example, in this case, the C. elegans embryo. So it's LSM880 air scan, and now LSM880 air scan fast. We have gentle imaging, low laser powers, and really go very, very low. 0.5, even 0.2% of laser power, as compared to maybe 1 or 2% or even higher on the regular focal microscope. Much higher um, resolution than the confocal microscope does, and also much faster now. And still, anything else in the confocal microscope is, is also available. We can still do the spectrum separation, if that could be of interest. So 
but nothing has been excluded. We've just increased the signal to noise the resolution and the speed. So if you look at the triangle now, speed resolution versus signal to noise, you just expanded the triangle in all three directions with the edge can detect. Nice thing is that the edge can detector can be retrofitted to older LSM 710, 780s, or now also the 880. The edge can fast can only be added to the LSM 880 because we need a special beam, beam shaper for that. With that, I'd like to uh, finalize the talk, but of course, if there's questions, feel free to ask. And if you would like to see it live, we will be demonstrating it this afternoon at the CBI. Thank you. Everything is required at the same time. However, the images have to be post-processed afterwards. We don't do on-the-fly processing because we have files that are about 32 times larger than the regular microscope. It's quite heavy calculations on going there. With the scan fast, we now use 16 elements, so we have two times smaller file sizes that processing can, can go faster. Also with the software now we can do streaming, so if you acquire a time-lapse image, while um, you can stream the data that's being acquired to one computer, um, offline PC, and that PC can already start processing the data while the other time-lapse movements are still being acquired.